all right boys welcome back to the philly escape pod episode 21 full crew so full crew not just a welcome back to the fans but a welcome back to myself a welcome back from play hey plays put the, back. Boys, of applause. Tried, back. we missed him tried to we put the him. escape in escape pod <laughs> yeah, tried, they don't let him we back we reeled him tried back in reel me back in trying to take the closest <laughs> pod out of here but he's uh he's back in he's riding with us we got the fully um, healthy roster for the first time in a month, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. longer than that. So maybe we'll yeah. be like the birds, get a little W. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Flay was on the the three week IR, and he's he's back. We activated him, and he's he's back. He's riding I with us. A, uh, a little Lane Johnson, a little Calvin Ridley. Yeah, you know, take a little mental health. Well, <laughs> a little, well, a little mental health break. He's, he's back. Now. He's back. Early retirement. Well, well, guys, if if I've learned anything in the in the past week, it's that you guys proven to me, you know, you and you and Jackson Brits that you can't do it without us. So we're, oh, okay. and, um, no, no, but all, all seriousness, all seriousness, you guys held it down. You held down the fort, not only for another escape pod, but the 20th episode. So big yeah. milestone for the crew. Honorary two um, We're now able did. to drink. We're, t- we're at two one. Yeah. I, like really the, uh, I may be gone. I may be gone for a week, but I, I'm not going anywhere. So we love that. Lo- love talking sports with you guys too much. So we're back to full health. Um, similar to the Eagles, Eagles have been healthy this year, but we got a lot to talk about. Um, I might lead in with the, the dynamic duo here, talking a little bit Sixers just to start. You know, I've been out of it for the past couple of weeks, but we'll lead into that with you guys. But then the rest of the pod will talk all Eagles. So we'll talk, you know, this, this Broncos breakdown, you know, what went right? You know, the obvious that we've been waiting to do this whole season, you know, things that have been, you know, adjustments that have been made late, but, you know, they're finally here and actually running the football, right? Um, Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we're, we'll get into just offensive, you know, defensive breakdown as far as in season. So we'll stay in the moment right now. But then towards the end of the pod, let's think long term. Let's think, you know, what we're going to play the what is, you know, what is Jalen? What is Sirianni? What is Gannon? Um, thinking long term, right? You know, what are we going to do for the next year? What's this team going to look like? How are we going to prepare to actually move forward compared to this year? Because let's be honest, this team is average. I think I, I think that's what we're calling it. And um after that we'll just we'll go into i think looking back into our season predictions from earlier honestly we may be like oh for 10 spot on. In, our, in our protect in our predictions uh, uh, yeah I, not I quite like, spot on i feel like our preseason think, predictions are pretty spot on I, but I think, I think our i think we hit uh as far as like stats i, th- I think as far as stats we're we're kind of on the money we're trending towards the money on the money for a few but other than that we're kind of off on a few things, so we need to revisit a little bit. Maybe uh, I have something re- you guys readjust, are be surprised but... about. Why sounds later, good? But... Sounds good. Let's get into but it. I gotta bring energy in the pot. I'm, I've got the Sirianni look tonight. We're back, you know. I, I feel it. like where's your plant bringing pot? the energy back. <laughs> My, where's the soil? <laughs> we need oh, soil. Yeah, I, I need to get the flowers out. Should we dive right into the Sixers first? There's a lot I think to I, talk about I, the Sixers. I think so. I'll leave it to Batman and Robin here. Um, oh wait, before we before we jump in, by the way. I, I don't know if it was a lack of viewership as to why there weren't any comments speaking on uh, why I wasn't here last week. I like to believe, you know, people just like D&D and, and Ultimate Frisbee. They're cool things. I, I may have been gone, but I listened to the pod, boys. Okay. Appreciate uh, it. We, 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 we expected you to. Yeah, you know, we did ask for people to roast you in the US, comments, and US, nobody did. So. Uh, nobody roasted. Uh, I like yeah. to believe it's because, you know, they, 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 they got they, nothing to roast me with. But. Yeah. Also, nobody roasted Flay. Both of you guys got off scot-free, which is frankly ridiculous. But uh, but let's let's turn to, to the Sixers, Jackson and, and Brits. Yeah, one person won't be what getting sc- off scot-free today, I think, is Ben Simmons. Um, since the last time we were on the podcast, there's been a lot that's happened with the Sixers. Um, I think, honestly, the last time we talked about the Sixers, they had just, uh, I think they were 2-3 and three or 3-2, three and two, something like that. Yeah, they're 3-2. and two. Yeah. Uh, Since yeah. then, they went on that huge win streak with Embiid. Then Embiid went out. Um, and I think Curry went out for a game. Tobias was out for a bunch of games. And we had like seven people left. We were killing it. Uh, then Embiid went down. Um, we lost a few games against uh, teams that I think were a little bit better than us uh, with our current roster that we had. Even though we played them well, they, uh, people would call them moral victories. Uh, Dave Yeager has cancer, unfortunately. That's very sad. I think we should probably mention that. Um, and then we got to probably get into the Ben Simmons situation a little bit. It's uh, getting pretty dicey. So where yeah, do you guys I, know, I mean, start the- off? I, I have an updated out. Ben Simmons take for you guys. Oh, oh well, I'd love okay. to hear this. Is it fuck Ben Simmons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to say that uh, because Tyrese Maxey has been, like, balling out so well so far this season, I think that you can kind of take the 
gas off the or the you know take your foot off the pedal a little bit with how much you actually do need to get for Ben. Um, I agree. I kind of I agree. I think not only Maxi um, with Niang and Drummond playing as well as they have, and like Cork Maz took a step up, and Maxi, you're like you're saying, is just absolutely unbelievable. We I really also only think like we're a much smaller piece more, away uh, than part we thought. To that too. One more part to that is I think we also don't need to go for a point guard. We can it frees us up to kind of do whatever we want, you know, flexibility and what we get back. If we could maybe upgrade yeah. Danny Green as opposed to Tyrese Maxey, that would be huge, I think. Yeah. Just another outside shooter. Yeah. Play if if you missed anything, you missed Jackson turning to the dark side and, and joining in on the Ben Simmons hate. Uh, so <laughs> he's yeah. Well he's uh, officially with us now. There's so many things that are ridiculous with this Ben Simmons situation. It, fr quite frankly, it's like he's saying, because you guys know how he came out with that statement uh, last week where he was saying that the Sixers... The Rich Paul thing? Yeah, the Rich Paul yeah, thing. He's just... Yeah. They're trying, they're, yeah, they're, it's it's yeah. like they're trying to manipulate him into playing, and he thinks they need to take better, like, pay yeah. more attention to the me mental health aspect of it. But it's, like, quite fr frankly ridiculous because I've, hear I've been hearing people talking about it. He went through so many different excuses, like the fans, Joel Embiid, I'm on too good of a team, so I can't develop. The team's too good for me. And I don't want to be on the team. I don't want to play for you guys. And then he and then he gets to practice, and he's acting like a, like a baby. And then and, and and only then is he like it's mental health. And even well, even so, the team says, okay, if it's mental health, just go to uh like yeah. go to a doctor that we are. Specialist. Yeah, go yeah. to a specialist and just keep us informed. And he's like, okay. And then he doesn't keep them informed. And then so they keep so they resume finding him because he's just not keeping them in the loop. And he just, and then he, and then he comes out with that statement. We're trying to help him. He's just not, he's not yeah. working with us at all. Yeah. Yeah. As far as, as far as reports go, we, the Sixers organization has done everything to help him as far as the mental health aspect. I, I got to, I mean, with all the lies and shit that he said before he even got to the mental health that you just listed off Jackson, I like to believe, I, I have to believe he's just lying again. And this is just another way to make his money. And I, I have a bone to pick with it because I've done, I've dealt with mental health. I'm sure everybody in this group has done, you yeah. know, with have dealt with have dealt with mental health in some capacity, and to, to play that card with people dealing with something as serious as that, it's a real shit move. And and I mean, everybody goes through it, right? But to use this just, you know, with his intentions to get paid is the thought. You know, yeah. I, I that's it's, the problem. It's, it's, it's the lowest. It's the lowest of low you could go. Basically. That's the problem. There's an aspect to, to where, like, you could see that he maybe does have mental health issues or whatever. Right. But yeah, I'm like, not doubting that he does. Right. If he he should have brought it up before before he, there were like seventeen excuses for the reasons he wanted to play the team not want to play with the team before he said mental health and if it's not the mental health thing it's it, you're like you're saying it's messed up to use mental health as an excuse right. uh, just so that you can get paid. Dude, the, and the, he, the, and the, go ahead, Bruce. Yeah. No, the thing about <laughs> the money is like I, I I can't remember exactly what Rich Paul said, but he's basically talking like the Sixers are like making this a money thing and like you know finding him so many times. Like all Ben Simmons did in the off season was. Do every he jumped through every single hoop possible so that he could get paid still and not play. Could you imagine you know if you didn't show up your job? So like it is all about months. the money for them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you didn't yeah, show up your job yeah. for six months, they stop they stop paying you and you're like, Oh, I've got mental health issues and they're like, Okay, fine, we'll pay you. Just go to a doctor and keep us updated and you're like, No, you just can't, just pay me and I'll deal with it myself. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> it just so happens <laughs> right. the not only unfortunately yeah. works two right ways there, you know, because they right. want to get some value from them. Yeah, you can't. Not only are we paying you, playing. not only are we paying you, we're paying you with the max salary, like the highest <laughs> we could possibly pay you. At what point do you guys think he like becomes so tainted that he actually becomes like untouchable? The team is just gonna take him. He's just like a cuttable guy. I Ends don't think that'll happen. You mean no? you mean the Sixers yeah. take him or? It's not worth. Either. There's cut no him. situation where it's worth eating. Thirty-three million dollars in dead cap just to get him off the team. I think. No, but know, if he just like sits on the team for the rest of his contract and does like nothing, I just think if I he cut him, it's that. the you same exact you situation. Think is you think a team has taken him after that uh, contract's over? He might. I was. I, what I'm scared about yeah. is him retiring. If he retires, then he has to sit out for a year, and the, the year following that he can sign with whatever team he wants. I'm almost scared of him just doing that. But he get does he still get paid? No, he oh, he so loses his paid, entire right. contract. So that's Bill. that would be good for yeah, us, right? Kind of. It wouldn't be kind terrible, of. but also, you know, there's just at this yeah, point, there's actually might have the worst. Yeah, that would I mean, kind of be, be good in a way. We lose him for a year, we pay him yeah, for a yeah, year. But then... like you get a contract, you get, you, you get the max space, you get the cap space to sign basically another like max player. Right. I mean that. Yeah, yeah that wouldn't be horrible. I just think you're saying will he become tainted, and it's it's possible. 
Can we start the Ben Simmons retire train? <laughs> I mean, maybe this is the move. Speak it into existence. And just, and like, just, just retire. Years. What are, what are the 25. actual rules yeah. as far as like the cap? Like how long does it take for that money to free up for us? I think I Jackson know, said but, a year, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Want, we'll do some but, research and get back to everyone. Yeah. But the way that, but so. you were saying, do you think he's gonna get too tainted to be traded? And I think potentially yes, but I don't think we're even close to that because there were just rumors this week that the Celtics were thinking about trading us Jalen Brown. Yeah, for uh, nice. for Ben Simmons, and you you've I been hearing a that. lot of different like uh, reports from other possible? teams. Were there season so, packages? Yeah, it was possible. So it yeah, like, yeah, it's really seeming like we could actually get like a pretty well, solid. How much is Jalen Brown getting paid? About the same amount, I think. Oh really? Yeah, I, I think yeah. Okay. they're very close to. Okay. Interesting. So we so he's not tainted to the point where we're just cutting him for nothing. But how how much has the bar lowered? Right, we talked about trades in the in the past before, and that we're just not going to give him up for anything. Are we at the point where we've lowered the bar so far enough to the point where we'll just have a team take on his contract just so we don't have to pay him at this point? I don't think he, I don't think without him playing, I don't think it can get any more tainted. I think people are just going to slowly sort of convince themselves that he could be better. You know, I, mean? I just think a delusional team that's in need of a star could potentially trade for him still. I don't think teams that's will get play. desperate, especially if a playoff run is a. Uh... It's hey. It's in their uh, and the farther yeah. the farther away those missed free, free throws are, the more they're like, oh, he's a defensive player of the year. He's young. He's got all that potential, and they might trade for him. I just don't. If you're an offensive team and all your cogs are, you know, but we're not that team, unfortunately, you know. Yeah, unfortunately not. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, well one thing that I think we have to say about the Ben Simmons situation Definitely is that on the, our way there, like sort of what you were touching on, Flay is this bench is an absolute revelation this season. They're, they're so much better the than we could have ever league, anticipated. Yeah. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, Niang is amazing. Um, and yeah. Drummond is the best, is by far the best center we've, uh, backup center that we've yeah. had this entire time. I mean, we've yeah, always had I a good we bench. we said that about Dwight last year, and Drummond was just basically good as a, as a double. Upgrade yeah, and more. Yeah. Dwight. Dwight Which was is crazy. offense, yeah. dude. Because Dwight was legitimately the best center we had had, the best backup center we had had, and Drummond yeah. really is like double as good as him. It's, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, he is so really taking it over for Embiid like really well. I, I know we've lost I mean, four games he's, in a row, he's but he's under it's... thirty. He's like twenty eight. He's not yeah, even he's like that old, you know. But he just had you know some like weird stuff happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was, <laughs> he was, he, was a, he just, a terrible Pistons team. For he went from the Pistons to the to the Cavs, who wanted to lose, so they decided not to play him because they wanted to lose. And then he went to the Lakers, and they, he was like a scapegoat for Lakers. So now he's here. He's getting tw- he's getting freaking twenty rebounds he's like a game. Twenty he's like, rebounds. He's like averaging. <laughs> was he on the Lakers when they won? Uh, no, he was on the Lakers last year. The year oh, just well, last, last year, year okay. not two we years had, ago. Yeah, it was they Dw- had, it was Dwight. It was Dwight at that. They point. had Dwight, oh, then yeah. Drummond, then Dwight again. Now. Yeah. Forgot yeah. About that. So they went back to him. This is. I mean, this is why I hate how Maury gets hate because of the whole Ben Simmons situation when he puts pieces into place like Curry for. You know, getting Curry for Richardson. I mean, you know, getting Yang, finding and guy, Drummond for the Yang, man. Drummond. I mean, like all these backup players and putting these pieces in place that, you know, again, I mean, they are moral victories, but you know, at the same time, it's promising. It's it's a culture thing too, where they show a lot of fight and show a lot of heart. Even in these Cork, games. even Corkmaz, we got Corkmaz. Like his deal, we're still paying and him a decent amount of money. It's a cheap deal. It's a, yeah. cheap, it's a cheap deal considering yeah. how good of a player he is. I was surprised. I thought yeah. he was going to get like seven to nine. I think he's on like what five right now. It, and they were saying comparable contracts to players like him in the league are about $20 million. So we got him in like a huge steal. Yeah. And he's super Yeah, young. and again, he took us another step up. He's like consistently year after year has taken like incremental but noticeable like improvements in his game. And you know yeah. that because even like people around the area who have been like notorious cork mass haters have finally been like, you know what? He's he's doing it. He's he's getting better every single yeah. year. He's, he's, he's getting kinda, confident. He's getting, he's getting a little wiser. Right when he besides, got paid too. besides yeah. Simmons, he's the second oldest sixer on the team, the second yeah, longest tenured sixer. Crazy. Wow, that's a good point. So where we are now, right? We we're talking about, you know, a one year retirement plan for Simmons. Maybe it's a four year retirement plan. We don't know what it looks like yet. Three hashtag, years, whatever's hashtag whatever's uh left on his contract. But but what what next, right? What does it look like for this year? Do we end up going to be fourth, fifth seed, you know, get to the second round like normal? If so, you know, what do we need to do knowing that Ben's kind of out of the picture? We have JoJo, you know, who's who's been our guy, who is the guy. What's next for us to take that next step to, to me, personally, a championship caliber team? To me, 
I think uh, without changing anything right now, this roster is better than the roster that we had last year, even without Ben Simmons. I think Ben Simmons was good. Um, this team just is, I think, clearly much more cohesive and all together. Like, we we literally we beat the Rockets without, like, anybody. We were taking out, like, legitimately good teams with just our bench, with seven yeah. people playing. That's insane. And I don't think any, any time last year, like, I don't know. I, I don't know if the actual talent on the roster is better this year, but just the vibe and the way that they're playing is better. I think we could easily be a top three seed. And if we do end up trading uh, Simmons for even, like, a decent piece, like, I don't know if CJ would do it, but I don't know. I, there's, I think there's some legitimate packages out there that we could trade Simmons for that would make us that championship roster. I think this team is going to surprise everybody here. Still CJ well, over with, TJ, right? Yeah. Well, with, <laughs> with, with, way, with the way that the team is playing right now, with legitimately $100, or $100 million in cap space not playing, I mean, I know we've lost four games in a row, but every single game has been close, and we're literally playing with our bench. Yeah. Yeah. So like and we were so, playing like the the teams that we like lost to, they're not bad teams. Like we came Raptors, really close Bucks. to beating the Knicks. We came really close to beating yeah. the Raptors. And yeah. we did beat the we beat the Bulls twice in a row. And the Bulls are really good. Yeah. I mean it, it's yeah. impressive with the way the team is playing, even though we're not getting wins. And I think everybody's kinda of on board with the same thing. Like everybody all all around Philly, like it's just same same talk. Like the team's playing well, we're just not getting wins because we don't have our stars. Yeah, if we had Embiid yeah, in, yeah, I think right. I don't think we would have lost any of those games. Actually. Right. Like I think we would, like, I mean, especially if we had uh, Tobias back too. Like he, he's yeah. a huge piece. Well, Tobias is he's back now. Uh, we had lost the last two back. games with Tobias. Oh yeah. Which is oh. kind of it's kind of sus a little bit because you'd think after the hot start that we had with just our bench unit um, playing with like I think who was still in Curry and uh, and Green or something. And that was it, basically it. Yeah. Yeah, or Curry <laughs> and Maxi, I guess. But like, um, yeah, and then you'd you'd assume when Tobias comes back, we'd pick it up more we didn't which is kind of unfortunate but i don't know i i, th I think i think uh once we're fully healthy we'll be really really good yeah so get the stars back clear up some cap space if we can or just fill that space with a trade superstar that well, we, we get back i mean ben. the only way enjoy, to I, honestly i say ben. i say enjoy the moment i know the ben thing is unfortunate but this team's like having fun and we should it's fun, fun to watch them. and we, and we yeah. should enjoy it we should be part of the fun Play. What do you got? I've honestly haven't been keeping up with the Ben drama for the most part, so I just yeah, happy to join the team. He's Less bad. Stress. You can't. You can't now. You just gotta like say it is what it is and just let him yeah. sit and rot. He was back <laughs> in the film session this week, apparently. Uh, prior to the last I mean, game. Whatever. So. Mean anything. Yeah, but like, just think of all the like how that Next works thing. out with like his te your teammates and stuff. It's no different than we were in like you know high school or college or anything like if your teammates pulling some bs like that you're gonna be pissed at them dude that's oh, yeah. not gonna like, work out yeah, like, that's not gonna work out dude there's no way the team is uh, liking him right now would you guys want ben simmons back and if you do would you want him to start over maxi no no absolutely, absolutely not. not yeah i mean I think, uh, it's I hard think to say you want him to jackson that we said like we're playing better this year is because the spacing that we're uh, maxi is able to provide and just all around like the players like niang you know, it just works better for our, our, our like, style of team, you know? Well, it, it, to, to talk into that, Austin, um, do you think the reason for that is, is, like, Ben, when he's on the court, uh, whether it be with the starters or the bench, it seems like he pretty much completely collapses the uh, the spacing, especially because when he has Embiid out there, at least Embiid, Embiid can shoot a three. If he's out there with Drummond, that's two people that are in the paint that can't shoot the three. It completely collapses the offense. Yeah. Do you think the reason we're so much better is because Maxi can shoot the three, so then he can play with both the uh, like the starters and the bench unit and really work with both of them. I just think in general, like when you have a player like Maxi who can shoot the three, it forces the defender to take those two or three extra steps out to the line. Yeah, we and talked in about the NBA, this. Yeah, in the NBA, yeah. that's just so important when it comes to like a, a player like Embiid getting double teamed and being able to do his thing down there. Having Maxie's a point so guard that can it. shoot a three, dude, is so and, and create you know, space. Like that, those two steps also yeah. work when Embiid gets the ball. They got to take those two steps in freeze up for that kick out, you know, it just lets mm -hmm. everyone shoot a lot more I mean, freely. Being able to shoot the three alone just brings that defender out, right? So that's just one it's less guy in the paint that's defending. Yeah, if you're Embiid. guarding Ben, you know you can slack off to the, to can, the free throw line. Just yeah, kind of hang out. Ben was and legitimately you, a non-factor when he had the ball, like at the, at like bringing the ball to the court. He'll just dump it off. Well, right. a huge problem has always been as soon as Embiid comes off the court and a backup center comes in with Ben, it's like the offense goes, the plus minus of the offense goes drastically down. It's super negative and it's like, you're always playing that that game of like 
how long can you keep him beat out before you have to put him in, back in and get the uh, the lead back up? And I almost feel like without Ben, that problem doesn't exist anymore. Like we're closing out games better, and our bench is just drastically better. I think it just like your guys are saying. I think it's just the addition of having a point guard that can actually shoot. It's revolutionized us. Yeah, point guard that yeah. plays yeah. a point guard, dude. It's I mean, like it's, welcome uh, to 2021 basketball. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, and the <laughs> offense isn't stagnant. You get some ball movement, and it's it's flowing. The chemistry is there between these guys right now. Well, plus, what... you don't, plus, I just want to say you don't want to reward bad behavior. How does that look to your team for a guy who's pulled every yeah. excuse out of the book, comes back, and then you hand him something that he wants just because he's been and he gets everything his entire life? I mean, I'm pretty I mean, sure Maxi precedence does that set for a guy like Maxi who's been working his ass off to get to the point where he is now. I'm pretty sure he's averaging more points than Ben has, like, like oh, in, his, for in sure. his career, like so. For sure. Yeah. I just we really can't take for granted the steps that Maxi has taken. Maxi has, he's his his improvement has been drastic. It's insane, actually. Yeah. He, he and 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 that's up, and like that's, no other. That's that's the magic word steps. You know, there's a, there's an incline there. There's growth that you can see. I mean, with Ben, it's been it's been this. So it's, you know, that's the difference, and that's why a guy like Maxi deserves to stay. And Ben. Youngest sixer, uh, younger six, youngest sixer in NBA or in Sixers history, I guess, to score two thirty uh, point games in a row. There you go. Well, Past uh, Allen Iverson. He's so legit. That's, so that's that's good history to have. Um, <laughs> but let's let's turn to to the Eagles and let's talk about a team that's been making history in a in a bad way, at least on the defensive side, where they're letting guys like uh, you know anybody uh, throw eighty percent, you oh, know, in the much. past. You know, over five games, um, and I think um, we've allowed that like twice in all of Eagles history. But either way, let's break down what was a good is a good defensive team in the Broncos, um, and you know, you know, we'll kind of go through offense and defense, and then we'll talk about what this means. Kind of the questions that I pose in my head as I'm going through this and I'm looking at stats because stats don't tell the complete story. I mean, you have Jalen in this game throwing for 179 yards, 69% completion rate, which is great, but he doesn't throw a lot for the entire, you know, entirety of the game. Um, two touchdowns and a pick, right? So three passes in the whole second half of the game, I think. And one Stats, hot touchdown. And with Quez and exactly yeah. with a bad, really bad drop. I mean, that was that was, that was huge. A throw. Um, could be three touchdowns on the day for Jalen. So st stats don't tell the entire story, right? Um, but this was the type of game for me that buys Jalen another year, buys him another year to compete. Yeah. I don't, I'm not at the point where I'm saying, Jalen, you have the job, you're the starter, you're the franchise guy forever. But it's the type of game, he looked like a, 179 yards, but 179 yards where he looked like a complete stud. Some of those passes that he threw to Devontae, to Quez, were absolute dimes. And I, I, felt, I felt like a, he was a franchise guy yesterday. It, um, did, it did. It did trend that way. So. Where it did it, did it feel like, like was? Did it feel like, like a Dak game. level game to you guys? Because it kind of did to me. Uh, I mean, I don't think he threw the ball like enough for that to say it's because Dak throws the ball like forty-five times like, a game and like the entire game. Yeah. yeah. Rookie Dak kind of led on the the run game though a little bit, did he? Or am I completely wrong? Yeah, he did with Zeke uh, when Zeke was in his prime. Uh, leaned on the right, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. They definitely did that, but they were also weren't as good as a team back then. Yeah, They're definitely way better now than they were back back then. Um, so with the rush, I mean, we've been unstoppable, guys. I mean, we've been like a Browns like offense on the rush. Howard twelve for eighty three, Scott eleven for eighty one. We're we're talking like seven yard averages for for rushing for these guys, and then fifty three for Jalen. So question number one, what is happening? Because I, yeah, I, I don't know, like, literally what is happening that's making us so good at, at this running game right now. Is it, is it Sirianni's offense just working better for Boston Scott? And I, because I know we're handing it off more. I know that's just one thing, but is it Sirianni's off, Sirianni's offense working better for Scott and Howard? Or is he actually changing up the formations, the play calling for Scott and Howard and, and didn't do that for Sanders? Like, what, what's going on here? Well, that's a huge question, right? Well, I, wanna... I think Sanders is not a bell cow back. Is that the question? I think that's, it... I think that's getting well, uh, that like arguments getting strengthened with what we're seeing with well, this like multi the thing is, multi back the thing lineup. Is, I feel like we we uh, obviously everybody has been saying run the ball more and they run the ball more and we immediately have more success. But the thing is, did we ever really give Miles Sanders that chance to be that bell cow back? We didn't with 
with those runs. It almost seemed like we were doing it in the beginning of the Raiders game, and it was working, but he just got hurt immediately after, so we had to abandon it. Right. I think that's always been the case whenever we try to use him in, in like, those type of situations as he gets hurt, and I think... That's true. I think our offense just runs better when we play with, uh, you know, multiple running backs and multiple styles of, of backs. I think and, 20, 2017 proves that as, as well as any other year that we've ever, like, seen, you know. We just had a, a multidimensional yeah. run that could hit anyone. And we, we cannot turn yeah. our nose up at Jordan Howard or uh, Boston Scott. Those guys, dude, they can do they can Any do it. time good. Boston no, Scott's on the field, so he's nice to be able absolutely to bring electric, out. dude. Every time. Every time he gets the ball, it seems like he's yeah, doing making yeah, a play. Yeah. And, and, and this, yeah, and this is what I was saying early in the season. Why is Boss not Scott not getting a few touches just to like, just show his energy a little bit? Because he's, I, I, they're they're good running backs. Like I'm at the point where I ha you have to say that. Like it's not, like yes, maybe they're not stars and maybe they're not getting big contracts, but you have to play these guys. And so the question is, question is, is it is it Sirianni or is it Sanders? And I kind of align with you guys where it's, I feel like they weren't giving him those opportunities for one. You know, they didn't give him those opportunities earlier in the season, but I feel like the play design, kind of these side handoffs, you know, they're even going to Scott and, and Howard in the I formation. I mean, he's just running downhill straight between the tackles. So, I mean, up the middle runs, I think, are like an absolute revelation. I mean, when you have an <laughs> offensive line like this, this is the way to go rather than these kind of like half RPO, you know, not know what to do with the ball type plays. So I feel like I feel like it's it's more so the play calling changing that's been helping, but you got to give credits to these backs. I mean, they've been doing it. Three I'm games giving, in a row now. Well, that's I want to talk think, about. I'm oh, sorry, Jackson. I just want to say something about go back to Miles Sanders because the thing about Miles Sanders is I think it's such an anomaly. Like I, like you said about the Raiders game, it looked like we, that was the start of us saying, "All right, screw this, we're running the ball." Let's do it. Like, and then they did do that the next couple of games. Like we have we've seen ever since the Raiders game, we've been running the ball a lot more. We did get get rid of it in that game. Um, I think that's Sanders just because we only had Gainwell left, maybe. Right. Not, sure. We didn't have we didn't even have uh, Boston Scott or uh, we had Boston Scott activated, but we didn't have Jordan Howard activated. Uh, Howard, yeah. Um, but it it blows my mind because like it almost makes me think that Miles Sanders like we're not getting the whole story. Like maybe he it is not a good like is maybe he's just not good in practice. Like they, they don't trust him to even run the ball because he's just makes bad plays. He might just oh. not be that good. Like when I it comes down to like seeing the holes and, and like and actually hitting the right holes and stuff the thing is that i haven't seen it for myself mm -hmm. i haven't like gone back and watched the tape on it but i have heard that um it, there's instances where he does miss the holes a lot and potentially jordan howard and boston scott are just better at just quick hitting that hole you know that's what i'm saying because like it otherwise yeah. otherwise why wouldn't we just i mean he's obviously a more talented back than they are like he's obviously once he hits the hole he's gone right yeah it's just if they're hitting it you know seven times out of ten yeah. and he's only hitting it three times out of ten and it's like, I, it's yeah. it's a big question. Would you rather have somebody who hits it three out of ten times, but when he hits it, it's a big run? Or would you rather have somebody who hits it every time and gets seven yards and just keeps the drive going? I'd absolutely take the second thing that's, because it seems like it's obviously yeah. working. Like, we, I mean, we won two games basically off the run alone. And I think... And, yeah. And, the, I, and go ahead, Jackson. I just wanted real quick to give credit to Jordan Howard because I think throughout the league, uh, everybody trashes on Jordan Howard. They act like he's yeah. very old and his career is done. But every time he gets on the field for us, he's he's good. He scores and I, touchdowns, dude. <laughs> and I just want to ask: Are we at the point where, like, yes, Miles Sanders is good, and Miles Sanders, um, theoretically could potentially hit these holes and do as well as Jordan Howard when he comes back? But are we so far into the success of Jordan Howard and Boston Scott where we don't really want to take them out and and chance that? Well, we're, I think I think we're definitely going to have. Miles come obviously if he comes back he's definitely going to get the ball a lot. Would you want him to be number one on the depth chart again? It's tough to say, dude. I don't know. I really you're, don't know. You're, you're getting to the question that I was going to ask Jackson because that's what it comes down to, right? He's coming back. I think he's going to be activated next week. You don't don't fix if it's not broken. Don't fix it. And and right now you're in a wild card playoff race against really bad NFC teams. If dude. it's not broken. Don't fix it. You have to keep running with these guys. Where it's it's you're, I mean, I'm, I was looking at the stats today. We are the second best rushing offense, as you know, in regards to rushing yards. We're you know second best in the league, Jeez, right behind. I did not know that. Right behind the Browns, and consider that considering with how who much they we, have too. Considering <laughs> who they have, and considering how much we didn't run the ball, I think three right. times in the Dallas games earlier in the season. So to say. <laughs> 
How, well, I mean, that, that probably does include Jalen's yards. So that's one yeah, caveat exactly. there. It does include but, Jalen's um, yards, and he has a lot a, of them. It's a, it's a, it's a big, <laughs> big caveat there, obviously. But still has a lot to say over the past month of football that we've seen in Boston Scott and Jordan Howard. Um, it, it goes to what you guys had said. I, I think you hit the nail on the head completely. Completely different runners. I think Boston Scott and Jordan Howard, standard running backs, hit the hole, go where they're supposed to. They're not thinking about those big plays where they explode and, and go for 60-plus yards, right? Not, um, not only- I think you used the word earlier uh, for the Sixers, and I yeah. think it applies to the offense. It's uh, promising. I think these are schemes that we could uh, see if we keep working on these, especially with a new head coach, you know, that these are things that can eventually continue to work out in the future. It definitely makes me more optimistic for Sirianni's future because he was at a point where we had all given up on him, and he definitely completely revamped the offense, made it much more heavily based on the run game, and it's really transformed everything. And to add to your point, Caputi, it, throughout the three the past three weeks while we've been doing this uh, the new run game offense, we're actually uh, ranked the number one offense in the entire NFL. So in the last go. four weeks? The last three weeks. Three weeks? Jesus. So that, that shows you literally when we made the change – what the results are but to answer your question jackson would you rather have that explosive guy three out of ten plays or you know the seven out of ten plays three out of ten plays that could be two three and outs and then one touchdown what's one touchdown off that big play i mean if you have seven out of ten those could be all three scoring drives so you get more out of that play, right with the eagles defense and how bad they've they've been playing i mean they, great game against the broncos but you know it's it's kind of the same idea like we they the offenses against us they own time of possession they're literally just driving down the field and they're not but they're not getting those explosive plays because we play those two man deep safeties and try to protect against that so you rather have that time of possession driving slowly down the field you, time of possession wins the game just going to say that as you know come out and it's say what that lost I mean, us we, the first we, four games i think we know that exactly so that's what's been losing us the games for you know just playing that what style of, of defense where we defend against the big plays and just let them drive downfield. That's the way you win in the in football. Time of possession. Yeah. Controlling the ball. You're almost letting them get a field goal at least. Like they're scoring points. Exactly. On making the drive. defense tired. You have to you have to maximize opportunities, not necessarily maximize scoring by these big, big plays. And so. it's like it, it's to put it in baseball terms, it's like would you rather have somebody who's hitting like two twenty and uh, that's a power hitter or somebody who's hitting like 420 and they're hitting like doubles every play right. i'd rather I'd just somebody who's getting on base and keeping the offense going that's literally amazing in baseball huh? yeah, that would be that, that would be a ridiculous <laughs> yeah. stat but i know what you're saying 300 but, hey, something, yeah. but you don't even you don't see you don't see doubles or even singles anymore it's home runs or strikeouts so it's no it's 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 a great point but um yeah because i mean with with guys like scott and howard you're looking at second and threes for for Jalen, and that's where you know you're continuing the progression. You're getting him to be comfortable, rather than you know second and ten, second you know third and eleven. Like that's just the offense is becoming stagnant, and it's it's working. You're, you you just got to continue to go with what's working. It would be crazy at this point to go Change fully back to Miles in in the next week, and then just go back to what you know doesn't work. So and to bring it back yeah. to uh, the 2017 season, I remember the reason why we had some huge success on offense that they always brought up was that. It was always that second and short that we were going for. And then you get to keep the drive going. And it seems like in the years since then, it's always been that second and long where we're just trying to sort of yeah. force it in and get the first down, and it doesn't usually work. So it's nice to finally be back to something where it's, it feels I, like there's a rhythm to the offense. What, what you just said, I actually tweeted the other day. Uh, I absolutely despise when teams pass the ball on first down get an incomplete pass, and then run the ball in second down. Ball, second down. I cannot stand it. I think it's the worst play in football is to do yeah. that because it's, you're basically guaranteeing yourself a either a third and four or five or a maybe even a, a, a third and long situation. A third and four in a very good run. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's an like, ideal it's, scenario. Yeah. It's, like, it's funny, and it's so predictable, too. It's like the team's like, oh, first down didn't work. We should have went to the run on the first play. Let's right. do it now. Do it now. And then it's like – it's so predictable every single time. It seems like, like the perfect time for an RPO, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, that's what there's but, been the controversy where people were saying that um, Jalen Hurts would opt out of the RPO and instead of giving it to the, the back, run it himself almost every single yeah, time. Yeah, he was doing that. And it, it seems like he's stopped doing that and he's just either actually running it and opening up the RPO. So it's, 
or if we is, uh yeah i was, I was gonna is, say yeah if it is if it is a run it's either design a design run for Jalen, or it's something where it's his complete last resort like he's he's not fully going to the run right away when he sees that does, something doesn't yeah. work the announcer like, talking about he's that he's definitely in the game he's progressed a lot um, and I, I haven't seen a lot of those plays where he scrambled to the right and just threw it out of bounds because that's what's what he does every time in the game yeah. kind of look. Like he actually they actually designed a play where he, he broke out to the right. It was like a PA boot. Um and you know, I think it worked he out. He is really good at getting to the outside though on those design plays though, and getting like six, seven yards. Um yeah. before we go Keep into playing. the uh the predictions that I think we're going into next, the uh, early season predictions. Um yeah. We got to give a shout out to Devontae Smith, dude, because this guy is an absolute beast. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's so good. And I'm so happy that we yeah. have him now, dude. Like, we actually, yeah. the way we, 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 going up in the draft and getting him, dude, it was the best thing we did. That catch was incredible. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Like, that he, first touchdown. And, and not even, not even have, like, I mean, he has, what, I think it was, like, three touchdowns in the last, like, two weeks or something like that. Like, not even that, like, just have, like, having those touchdowns. He's always open, dude. And it seems like Jalen is yes. still missing him sometimes. Like, like Jalen can just get a little bit more accurate, dude. This guy could just put up insane stats this year. And it's That's like, the thing I yeah. feel like with Jalen. He already has like, 500 like yards. The thing he is missing is a thing that can be, can be worked on. Yards. Like, you can, you can improve your accuracy as a quarterback. Those are, that's an improvable yeah, skill. Yeah, right. It just, right. I, I always yeah. feel like in the past we've gotten receivers and we have to, like, sort of trick ourselves into thinking that they're good, like with <laughs> Aguilar or with, honestly, even Rager. I'm, I'm kind of yeah. down on him right now. It's like you have to we were like wait for them to develop or wait for them to get the opportunity and then they'll shine. It's like it's nice to have somebody where we don't have to like trick ourselves into thinking that they're a stud. Like yeah, he's just Devontae good. Smith is a stud. You just lock it in like, like he's good, then he can have a good game pretty much. He's every a stud. Week. We talked about this before. A guy you can play in fantasy. He's actually a guy, you know, and, and receiving is kind of what I what I wanted to get into next. Um because I mean Devontae Smith had a lot of games where he had like zero yards, but that's not because of him. I know it's, not it's just of him. him not getting the targets and the looks. But he still has 600 yards in the season. So imagine what he could be with Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. Or, right. I, mean, I mean, he could be pretty amazing. I was actually thinking about that the other day. If he was on like a star um, team, he'd be like insane. Even, even just a Kirk, Kirk Cousins, who a guy who's, again, we've talked about this before, completely average, but he turns guys into Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, I mean, he's star like players. Pretty good thrower of the football. Some of that. Um, <laughs> but receiving on the day, right? Because this kind of speaks to everything we just talked about. Four or six, 66 yards, two touchdowns for Smith. Watkins four or six for thirty three, but he had that bad drop. You got to make those plays. You, you can't no. be in the right NFL in and and yeah. not make that play. That was maybe J- that was maybe Jalen's best throw of the year. That was <laughs> uh, that was an amazing. It was a beautiful throw. Yeah. Jalen Rager, one of two targets, twelve yards. And what is he doing out there? It. I don't get it. Um, I just don't think he's a part of the game plan that much. Is he not getting open? Is it, he... It's it's bad. I guys, I I like to have Watkins on this team. I think he's. He's a good second. I think he's probably a better three if you had to have something in it. We need something on this on from receiver. Like what what do we do? Because you can't go into this next draft drafting a receiver knowing, you know, it, it mostly tends out as re, it it tends trends to be a guy like Rieger or a guy like J Jaw. Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna have I mean Smitty Smitty's though. kind of a one of a kind and how he did his job there, but I don't I don't want to I, I I'm thinking I want to go free agency. I mean there's there's a chance Mike Williams goes out. I don't think so. The Chargers would probably resign him. Allen Robinson, you know, might be a good, you know, bigger type of guy who goes up for balls. Um that could be a good add. That's a compliment to to Smith, but I I can't go in the draft and get another receiver, you know, early third year in the row. I I need to go defense. So what do we do yeah, with I the think receivers we, here? Well, at least not first round. At least not first round. No. Of course. Yeah, right, right, right. Right. Definitely so I gotta think go a lot defense. of it depends on uh, if you really buy into if Jalen's the quarterback for the team or not. I think if okay. if he's not, then you trade one of those picks and you keep that like first round draft equity just continually ongoing. Just trade it for next year's first round. And, this is yeah, that's exactly and, what I said. Yeah. This quarterback class not not too uh, not too sharp. No, it's from, not. from what I've been hearing, so yeah. not someone that you really want to take a uh, take a shot on. Yeah, no reason to risk it on like blow it up, risk it on another QB trading up. We just need to really, like you're saying, continue to have that draft equi- equity for years to come and just stack up this team with some good players so we have some actual depth. Yeah, I would say if you're going to go first-round picks, you want to try a linebacker. I don't, I don't know how any I of mean, these classes we're, we're, we're looking at. We're if looking we at could the draft fifth. a linebacker, 
I would. It's 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 so frustrating because we haven't drafted a linebacker. Yeah, I saw it's, since it's, the eighties, I think. Yeah, it's the seventies. Yeah. We, we need gonna, to draft one. I, first I don't know if it's gonna, but it's, it, it's so clearly crazy. it's clearly a problem. I mean, we're gonna end up. It's uh, how it's trending right now: fifth, eleventh, and fifteenth pick. With all of those picks, I mean, even the fifteenth pick, you can get a great linebacker. I mean, nobody touches yeah. linebackers early. I mean, the Cowboys did it, and it worked out great in their favor. And Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons is but, really good. Um, I mean, I mean, Flay, you completely reiterated the the Jalen Hurts contingency plan that I that I keep saying. Let's trade back like we did this year. Let's not get a quarterback this year, but let's buy you know some value in a first early first round next year. Push push that back to next year. Still get a defense, you know, a lot of defensive guys this year, but kind of building some contingency. Give give Hurts another year, and then we go get another quarterback potentially next year. If the class looks a lot and, better. And I really do think uh, all three of our picks should be on the defensive side of the ball. Hundred percent. We're getting close to starting to see Eagles brand walkers out on the field. These people are getting; these guys are getting old. They're, they're, yeah, we yeah. Got some, we're on an ancient defense. We do have some no, old yeah. guys on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, I would I say mean, I would say yeah. the only offensive type pick I want to see would be like either an absolute out of this world running back, which I don't think there's going to be any coming out of this draft class, or a uh, offensive line. Like a a really good yeah O-line. yeah not a dick I could see us going center or guard or who's something ready maybe. to come out and just guard. like get to it you know you can never go wrong have... with the offensive line but yeah honestly yeah like a linebacker a guard and maybe either like another linebacker defensive end or safety something like that I think would be perfect because let's let's not kid ourselves Maddox has taken a huge step up this year huge yeah oh, huge. yeah he is dude I, I mean honestly at this point I think if we pick anything but a quarterback or a wide receiver it would be a good pick because yeah. like but we yeah no. need, that's the spots we need to fill that we just have not filled for the last three i years. mean my preferred order would be defensive end um corner then linebacker because i think those defensive ends go i mean i mean they go early when you have a miles garrett a joey right. bosa a nick bosa those guys all go early i mean building in the trenches is where you go in football nowadays now but you can get that corner at that mid, you know, at that ninth, tenth spot, and then you can also get a really, really good linebacker at the fifteenth, kind of the I, teens there. I, guess. I, I know we have three first round picks. Do you know how many second round picks we have? Not, I don't know. I'm not all up to date on that. No. Nope. Okay, I think well, it's at least two. I'm, I have a question for you guys. If we do get the Dolphins pick, and it does, I mean, we do get a Dolphins pick, but if it does end up being like a top five pick, and there's a defensive end there, do you? keep that pick and, and and like a star defensive end there or something like that do we keep that pick and we go and we actually take the top five pick if we are you are you ready to say uh you're done with brandon graham i mean dude like he's getting old dude. <laughs> like, he is he's, he's injury prone too depends if jalen continues to progress throughout the season if he's looking if he's looking really good at the end of the well, season well i think there's no definitely. way i think there's no way that we i think there's no scenario where we should be drafting quarterback next year I exactly think, no but if we want to if you want to potentially draft a quarterback next year you right. don't want to trade an 11th or a 15 pick you want to trade up the fifth pick and get like that top quality like pick next year i, I agree yeah you know you're I not going to get you're not going to get a top five pick without trading the top five pick you know you might be able to well, even as it stands, a little an earlier one you know you might be able to get like a third i guess i, I, I guess my question would be then as it stands now how jaylen's looking right now what would your plan be would it, would it be to keep that pick and, and get a defensive end knowing we're going to keep yeah yeah right your defense yeah. there's the best defensive player on the board def- if it's not I'll defensive end yeah right that's yeah. Not, that's what i'm kind of saying best defensive player on the board kind of thing i do think is, though, yeah I and he's say, going I that think, high it might not he might not even be going that high or like that low whatever i i don't think i think like at this point in the season it seems that our picks are going to be higher than they actually are because i i know two was out for a while and i think their whole team was yeah. kind of hurt and i think they're getting more healthy and their pick is going to uh come across uh later in the draft than we thought maybe closer to 10 yeah. and we are actually at this point in the wi- in the wild card hunt and we have a good shot of I actually making that. the playoffs yeah. um because i think we should if we're as good as we think we are which i know we don't think we're that great but we're like okay we I should win <laughs> maybe the next five out of the next six games because I, I don't even I like the, dallas, the last too. dallas game mm-hmm. is probably going to be against their backup so i think we could easily win that we should have yeah, I mean, we least said early in the season that our late our late schedule was pretty friendly. I just it, it seems is. like I think our picks are gonna end up coming like nine, like sixteen and eighteen or something like that. More so than higher up than we yeah. were thinking. 
I mean, I mean, to answer your question, Brits, it just depends on the scenario. Obviously, I think you don't get a quarterback no matter what. If there's, yeah, I think you if let's let's say there's as far as defensive end class goes, if it's a Miles Garrett, you absolutely take that pick. If it's a Quiddy Pay, I think you could potentially trade back and then get something else. Like get the best available if you can, because I think you could still get a lot of great talent in that mid tier, you know, first round, uh, first round. Compared to just going up and get, I mean, even even if there's a slight chance for a bust for a quarterback, don't touch them. Don't even think about it. Yeah. You know, you you can get all these great quarterbacks in the second round, third round. I mean, even even I mean, look at Patrick Mahomes. Look at all the guys who went before him. Right. I mean, I it's mean, the draft is definitely a gamble, but it's a it's a gamble, but you know, filling in the think, gaps um, on defense is pretty important my, right now. You got to think Mahomes about your future. 10, so. Yeah, but all the guys who went before him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think you had Deshaun Kaiser go, go before or whatever his name rough. is. Yeah, I, I, I just, I want to say, I think, yeah, like you guys are saying, if there's, but if, if we're just not in a position where if there's a generational talent on the board where we're at, we're not in a position to pass them up, regardless of what, whatever position he is. Jackson, do you yeah, even know if there's any generational talents in this draft? <laughs> not at all, dude. And we don't even know that, and we don't even know. We'll know. We'll know as we get uh, closer to the draft. We're not at that point. The only guy I know is that quarterback so, from Liberty, and I know he's pretty good. He'll probably go first quarterback. Uh, yes, court. yes, yeah. No, I, I do know who you're talking about. Um, so let's let's play the what is game, right? So what what is Jalen Hurts? Just simply simply put, right now for you, for you guys, what is he? He's a project. Got to keep him. I mean, I I think I mean I think we got to keep him for another year, and he's. I think he's very, he's very able, very much able to get better. I don't see at any point where like he's going to regress. I don't think he's a guy that will regress. I think he'll get better. It's just kind of how good will he get and how long will it take? Is he a Baker May- Mayfield project time? You know, no. team manager guy. No, I think I think he's either going to be a guy who's basically someone who's going to be a playmaker that could like like does enough to or does the wrong plays and like loses you games like he has in the past or he's going to be a playmaker that is like a top 10 quarterback okay. i think that's what he's going to be i think he is a quarterback that can get you to the playoffs i think if you have a, a team a good team around him i don't think he as a quarterback alone could ever win you a championship but i think we've seen that you don't need a amaze like you don't need a like obviously it helped greatly to have a Tom Brady, but if you have the team built right around everyone and you have star players in every other position, like a quarterback like that can do something. So I play, I see it completely exactly the same way as you do. I yeah. think he's not somebody yeah. who's going to lose you a game, but he's also not somebody who's going to win you a game. Yeah, and I think see, I, I think actually in the same way that, that. I think well, in the same way say, that Foles did I would it. say he could win you a game, but I would say like you know he could win you a regular season game, but he's not the guy who is going to be like year in year out like the team is a contender because that's their quarterback you yeah know? It, it's not, not like home, it's not, not like crazy. oh jalen hurts is on the team they're not gonna win anything or oh jalen hurts is on the team they're gonna make the playoffs i think it just it like you're saying it completely depends on the team that we have around him yeah and i think we're gonna... Smith turns out to be like the best wide receiver in the league you know like uh two three years down the line and you know it's still at that point then like depending on who else we have if we make some good drafts in the next uh two years like a good shot of uh this team's looking pretty good yeah i'm <laughs> also just looking into a crystal ball that's totally cloudy i really do think that like if we build this team up and take advantage of the fact that we have him on a rookie contract uh we could do something really big in the next few years and i'm not ruling out at all the possibility that he does become that player where you're like oh he's on the team he can win you that game i just don't think he's at that point yet yeah i kind of yeah, no, I, I yeah i i agree with you guys with jackson and play completely i because i i thought these same thoughts earlier he's not because let's 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 face it winning a super bowl is really hard unless you're tom brady but <laughs> it's we if we learned any if we learned anything it's a team win and i i feel like after watching a game like yesterday i feel like if he has a complete team around him if it's like a 2017 type environment you could you could win you could win i'm not i agree I, i'm not looking at him and i'm saying okay automatic 12 wins automatic you know, 13 wins this year. Right. But if I'm looking at a game like yesterday, I'm comfortable knowing that, okay, Jalen's my quarterback. Let's build up this year. Let's have fun watching the season. We could really be in contention. 
It gives you a good chance. So, it gives you a good chance to win games, especially if you have a good defense. I, I still think you want to frame it where Jalen, you have to earn this. You don't. It's it's not your job to lose. It's your job to still earn. So put him through competition. I mean, still. I mean, we're let's face it. We'll probably go into the next year's draft. We'll get that standard sixth round, seventh round quarterback that we know isn't going to do anything in life. But you have to draft a, a backup. Just keep throwing him through comp, com, competition. You know, it, it's. I'm still looking at it like a first year for him. I mean, second year is could show a lot of progression from the first. Let's see what he does. He, he's bought another year in my book. It's um, the Ben but, Simmons rookie. But, but he is he is a project. He has a lot to still prove to be able to say. You know, I mean, I I mean Daniel, a guy like Daniel Jones, right? Throwing him in the trash. Like I know he's not a guy that <laughs> you <true>. want. <laughs> yeah. Jalen, I can I can look at Jalen and I could say uh, I know I know I'm at least not saying throw him out. Let's move on as quick as possible because I, I don't fully know right i think we're all happy he's on our team right now i think we're happy with the quarterback we have right now we're not like damn we gotta get another we gotta get a quarterback now like we gotta get a new guy like but i like i was saying earlier i just don't see him being the guy who like leads your team to like a consistent average season i see him as a guy who is either going to be we're gonna be like a six win team for while we have him or we're gonna he's gonna progress and we're gonna be like a 10 plus win team you know what i mean High risk, high reward. Like that's what I, I'm saying. I just don't see him being really, like. Dice. I just don't see him being like a, a middle of the pack quarterback for his career. It's either gonna spiral out of control and burn, Boom. or he's Boom or, or he's gonna fucking he's gonna progress. And I, I I'm leaning toward him progressing. Well, I think at this point we could all see that if he if he continues on his trajectory, he's gonna be at least an above average quarterback. He's right. by no means gonna be bad. Um, yeah. one thing that I really like about him is that it doesn't seem like the moment is ever too big for him. I think yeah. even if like we fail at the end, it doesn't seem like it's because he's nervous or anything like that. I think he's just he's ready, and I I really appreciate that. Um, and like you were saying, Flay, rookie of the year. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's basically his Ben Simmons rookie uh, oh, year. Is it yeah. a little rookie of the year action going on here? Well, he's not he a rookie. Competition with Devontae. <laughs> I mean, he's not. It's not gonna. He can't pos. It's not possible to get it. But I see. I, 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 yeah. Just how Ben Simmons sat out to his first year and then he won oh, rookie yeah. of the year his second year. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Well, uh, ben well one thing I will say about that is like, well, I think we were talking, who was I talking to? One of you guys, I think. Oh, yeah, I sent it in the group chat. He has 2,000 passing yards right now, a little bit more now, I think. And, oh, and, and like 550 rushing yards. I mean, that's absurd like that's a crazy stat like that's like he's got he's got like crazy stats behind him right now and like to, i mean obviously he doesn't have the touchdowns to back it up because i think he only has like 16 or something like that um but like lamar jackson won the mvp and led his team to a 15 and one season with 3100 passing yards and 1200 rushing yards jalen's on pace to basically have those same kind of stats with more passing but, yards which is quite frankly insane yeah but, but we're not do, winning games. <laughs> you do got to look at the record at the end of the day. And no, that's what I'm saying. We're of, just not winning a games. Of that, a lot of that is garbage yardage and touchdowns coming back from. I mean, you you got to look. I I don't I don't I. He's not winning the MVP. I no, he's not going to win the MVP. I, it's no chance. Yeah, but I'm saying the yeah, stats but, behind him are kind of. It's I, interesting to see them. Like that he has those good, crazy. It is stats. interesting, but you. you Unless we go on an absolute tear. You got to tell the full side side of the story. That's why it's you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. You it's, gotta use the eye test. Though. I was surprised though. I, like when you go and look at his like stats yeah, on yeah. Pro Football Reference, it's like you look at this guy, you think like, okay, this guy's a beast. <laughs> also, he's hey, the number three he, fantasy quarterback right now. Yeah, he's it's, it's very, really good fantasy wise. It is. It is very misleading. I will say. We need to take a look. All right, so let's look at the other you know core parts of this team. What is Nick Sirianni? Nick Sirianni is better than I thought. I think he. <laughs> uh, when the season started out, we were like, okay, this dude's a sham. You know, it rock, paper, scissors, my ass. He's not he's not doing shit, dude. He's not we've gone, off so, at all. we've gone so back and forth on the Sirianni. And, dude, train, I'm though. so at torn point, on Sirianni. Ever I mean, since it's he unreal. made that, he, I, think he, I think he tried a couple things. You know, he's somebody who's he's a wide receiver at heart. Of course he wants to pass the ball, right? But I'm, I'm happy he has finally accepted, you know what? You can't pass every down. you got to run the ball a little bit. we got a better running team. He has seen that. He's adapted to it, and he's, he's changed uh, the team for the better which is something I like to see. Uh, he's shown adaptability. And uh, for me, he has bought in, he, like like you were saying with uh, Jalen Hurts, he's bought another year, 100%. Yeah. 
Dude, when when you yeah. ask that question, like, what is Sirianni, it might be the hardest question in the world for me to answer, because I have no yeah, freaking freak. clue what to think <laughs> about him. I don't know if I like child. him or if I hate him, but, like, I will say the one the one word that's popped in my head right when you said that is, I, I just want to call him a dope, because he just seems <laughs> like he's a dope. You're, and you're dope. He just seems like a dope, but, like, also, dope. like, I feel like he does know football really well. I'm just not sure if he has, <laughs> has, has come to the point where he knows how to coach a football team. You're the, smart, you're, you're the smartest idiot I know. Right. <laughs> That's um, kind of what he is. Um, yeah, no, because it all started with the first press conference. Oh, he, this guy's a freaking idiot. And then and then came camp, and then we're like, oh, my God, the players love him. He's like, yeah. you know, the next generation, modern you know, Sean McVay type coach. Yeah. And then and then we win the first week, and then it's like, we're going to the bowl. And then it's like, <laughs> and then we, you know, lose. And it's it's all it's all. You know, it's all different when we. It's typical Philly, dude. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a one, it's a one week difference type of type of Philly environment where it's like he's the worst when you lose, he's the best when you win. It's you got to just see the full season. But I am with Jackson in the Jalen camp of fought himself another year. You have to do these things with with coaches. You can't just you know go through a bad year. I mean, look at Doug, seven and nine next year Super Bowl. Everybody wanted his but head. You, yeah, you have you have to fully see the product on the field before you you rush to judge things and what's buying him the another year is the adjustments if he continues with that if he continues with the, the going to the run game which doug um, didn't really even do honestly with, with doug never changed yeah he and didn't. and he stuck around and and he just relied on carson to win the, the stre- last stretch of the year every year um he's actually changing which is promising and i i still i still feel like he has that young mindset i mean jalen and him are meeting every friday they always talk about these things like you know maybe it doesn't matter as much in football but i feel like they're endlessly trying to figure it out you know he's putting the time in like jackson had said this in the beginning and countless times before you know you never have to worry about him not caring not putting in oh, work, definitely not <laughs> not wanting to be the best that he put his team in the best position possible i think the howie and lurie thing is always meddlesome like it's always tricky to kind of navigate how they're controlling the eagles but at the same time I got to love how passionate and how much he cares about this team and, and give him the time that he needs to see what, what is Nick Sirianni? He's a freaking goofball. He's a, he's a dope, but, um, but like a dopey guy that you love, you love to keep around. You, you also have let, to get, let, let, <laughs> say, let's be clear here. Nick Sirianni is like the Michael Scott of NFL head coaches, and, but I'm here for it. You know what I mean? And no matter what you say, like, like you're saying, it's actually a great, like, Fucking, <laughs> that's great. Scott, I like that. And, but it, like we were that's, saying, he is 100 oh emotionally here for the team and his players, and I have to respect that. I'm I'm just thinking of when David brings Michael into his office, and he's, <laughs> and he's like, like Michael, what are you doing? What are you doing right? You know, David. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'll start a know, sentence, and I have no I'll idea where it's going. And, yeah. and, and, and and it'll be the exact response Sirianni would probably give. Right. He's like, you got to do It's like if he wins 10 games this year where he's going to have no idea what to say, you know? <laughs> and, and he's going to literally go to playoffs and and just yeah, and then just go on this tangent not and yeah, he has no word. He that that's the per, it's the perfect comparison. I can't think of something that's a like great comparison. I you also have to like oh, I was yeah. going to say before, you you do have to keep in mind he is working with limited pieces especially on offense. Uh, like I mean, we do have like a pretty mediocre like staff when it comes to offensive players like and we got Devonte, and that's pretty much it like you see, and we got jalen who's like obviously like playing pretty well but i mean boston scott and, J- and jordan howard aren't really stars but they are playing well i mean it's act- i mean you have to give them a little bit of credit for like you know making those guys who aren't stars like you know put up really good numbers and unfortunately we've been rocking uh without dallas goddard pretty much most of the season too he's, yeah he's, he's in and hurt. out he's in and out Fortunately, and he was having a good game before he got hurt too, dude. He had a couple big yeah. catches. That's a big catch he had when he got rocked. Yeah. Pretty. Let's, I just want to say real quick on Dallas got got right. Is is his nickname pretty soon gonna be Dallas got hurt, dude? He's he's, he's, he's hurt every Gosh. freaking season. How long have you been waiting to say that one? That's good. <laughs> he thought That's of good. that uh, a while ago. Yeah, that's a good one. Um. Yeah. Definitely not got more God hurt than God like. I would say. Um, yeah. It's but. All right. I got the last one for you. What is Jonathan Gannon? Is he gone? Is he just gone? It's just Lord. <laughs> You're giving him too much credit. It's too much power. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Gannon, dude. Gannon, for the first, like, it seems like 
he's hit or miss, man. It's, it, for it, the first half of the season, it seemed like, like we were saying, the red carpet defense just let him drive down the field on, on us for the entire thing, completely controlling the time of possession. But in the past, like, ever since halfway, like, the last half of the season, he's kind of been very solid. So I don't know what to think. I don't know about very solid. I it's like every other week mark. his like scheme is like completely different i think he needs to find an identity dude like we don't like it's like one week we'll you know be a attacking the ball on every play and like making plays and then next week we're just like legitimately letting the team throw whatever they want on the field he's yeah. catering too much to the teams that we're playing against and not trying to find like a core could be possible. and that is one thing we talked about on a previous podcast like is he going is he game planning for the like for a specific team more so than just getting the defense into a mindset having a game plan every week and then making small adjustments to the team that you're playing because there's something to be said for the fact that he's really underutilizing fletcher cox fletcher cox is having the worst season of his career so what, yeah. what's the problem what's the problem here because we always we always talk about this like what comes first the defensive backs covering to allow enough time for pressure to get there and throw the quarterbacks off or is it really the the pressure that has to get there first in order to buy the defensive back the time i have I, my answer i want to hear what you guys have to say i for me i think the prob the main problem is uh the donut defense where we have a good line we've got good i think our secondary is probably the best secondary yeah. we've had in a while where they're actually covering but then it's like we're getting the pressure up front the secondary is covering and then the the opposing quarterback just looks in the center of the field it's completely open. He just tosses it right <laughs> there. Right. Nowhere to be found. Well, dude, yeah, exactly. it's it's not. It's also we're playing so far off the ball sometimes, and like you got to think that his, he's telling him to do that, like because there's no way that like a, a DB or like a linebacker wants to just be like five yards from the guy he's supposed to be covering. Like like yeah. everybody wants to like you know get up in there and like make a play. So and like it's strange because I feel like in years past, like our our line was the best part of the the defense, and then our secondary was horrible. And now I feel like this year our secondary is pretty good, and our line's like a little bit worse. Obviously, our linebackers have been consistently horrible, but it's just <laughs> we need something in between the two. Yeah, yeah and I, we, we do need we need so, we need a stud linebacker, dude, just to take control of the middle of the field. Yeah. So you you guys are hitting on a, a lot of my points tonight. I'm really proud of you guys. I'm really brought <laughs> you guys uh, up. Thanks all for line, uh, all linebackers. Thanks, nice draft. Yeah, let's just get three of them, dude. But all seven it's, rounds. It's it's different. What it what is Gannon? It's different than Jalen and Sirianni. It's not you bought another year, Jonathan Gannon. Not it's, yet. It's you have seven games to prove yourself that you can run a defense well consistently. Because you had these games where you completely basically shut out teams in the second half, held held teams to thirteen points or less, sixteen, you know. That those type of games and then, you know, a bunch of picks and then defensive scores. But you've also had games where you let up a million points and you just let them drive all, you know, down the field all over you and you don't stop them at all. I think the problem is part of your play design has been literally let them make catches, let them drive down the field yeah. because we want to prevent that big score, even though that big score, you know, 90 yard bomb, we all know that's rare. So and I'd rather have that than them just driving up the field, owning time. Yeah, possession, it's not like that's something that comes to get like burnt when you have like like if we had Ronald Darby still on the outside, I'd I'd be worried about like that thing. happening more often. But we don't. We have Slay and and Nelson. But the promising thing here again is adjustments. When you do things like play Alex Singleton in ten plays the entire game against the Broncos, that is something promising promising to me. Yeah, when you put in guys like Davian Taylor and TJ Edwards that you have seen and now know are the better linebackers because they can cover and also tackle. Um, and you put in a guy like, and you put in a guy like Maddox who has been playing, you know, amazing um, in the slot to take out, to only have two linebackers on the field at any given time. A lot of that stuff is promising to me. I mean, you still only walk away with one sack in this past game. I think it's a lot of, you know, leaving those guys open, not pressing, not playing man coverage. That's allowing the quarterbacks to get rid of the ball in two seconds. And so how, how is anybody physically possible, you know, going to be able to get to the quarterback? And that's why guys are throwing 80%. Yeah. If you know, I had to say one teams. thing to Jonathan Gannon, it would be stop letting quarterbacks throw for 90%, 90% completion just, percentage, dude. Like, that's just unacceptable. Literally, <laughs> literally <laughs> just play the game to make stops, not give them just handouts. That's, that's a part of the design is literally to give them, just give them yards. Like, I'd, I'd never seen that in my life. And to your guys' point, it, I think it kind of uh, goes back to what we were saying uh, previously about Miles Sanders and the running back situation. 
where we were saying that we prefer to just get have it, uh, a situation where we're getting somebody to get those consistent gains as opposed to like exactly. counting on Miles Sanders to hit the home run threat. So why would we be guarding against the home run threat as opposed to the consistent gains? The consistent gains are what's kill, what we're killing us. Yeah. Right. No, you're right. No, because we always thought, oh, we can win in this league without having time and possession. Chip Kelly are, you know, five minutes in the entire game and, and he scored like a <laughs> Scored like a million points, but it just it ran out of style. Peeling over by the end of the within third. a year, exactly. Yeah. The defense was completely tired out. So, um, you have seven games to prove it, Jonathan Gannon, before Nick Sirianni can say, "I'm moving on," and I need somebody who actually it, for, forget this bend and break shit. This is just give it to them, and you you want to min- minimize opportunities for them to score, not just minimizing the scoring. They have more opportunities; they're going to score no matter what. If you're going to put your defense in the position going up at the red zone, you know million times a game so he has a lot to prove to me to to, to yeah. be clear um nick sirianni and jalen hurts you guys have bought yourself another year jonathan garen you're on thin ice buddy yeah hot seat <laughs> that is, that as is if it wasn't well clear said. enough as if it wasn't clear enough we've been running long but let's just go through our predictions and see how wrong we were <laughs> i think is what we're trending towards so i'll just i'll go down the line real quick boys um we we all said we would win the division that's an um yikes we all we all said we would be above 500 wait no i didn't i was saying we we're gonna be above 500 i thought i i got the graphic that's uh that's tbd i got the graphic up right here grits you wait, wait are we talking screen? about are we talking about the one that we did earlier this season when the season had started or the one before the season not not earlier this season so um i was gonna say so, i thought so i said seven the, wins 15. Before this the was, season, I had said nine and eight. I, I had, I had gotten a little hype after the first game. I said thirteen and four. That was wrong. But I do still think nine and eight is going to be correct. I think Alicia, nine and eight. Are gonna be Alicia, Alicia, admitting record. to your, you're admitting to your mistakes. Um, I thought me and Flavor I, said seven wins before the season, though. I was, you did, you did. Okay. Yeah, but I, you, I think yeah, you, but then I, I bumped myself up. This, to nine. this, yeah, was, I think we this all is did. probably, this is probably after we won uh, the first game. Yeah. So this kind of shows how much, how drastic we could be. A little, little inflated. Um, just to, just to point out, um something i just to celebrate a little bit i want to bring up the fact that last yeah. year we only got four wins and we're uh like halfway through the season we're already there this year so that's that's big that's big yeah. we have to say something about that i think okay so don't don't celebrate wins, baby. mediocrity um so we were wrong we were wrong in that camp jalen trending towards um 3600 yards for the season i i just don't see him getting to the passing yard with us running the ball now i don't see him hitting that 4000 yard mark uh, Sanders is a definite no go. Um, he would have to get oh, rest in peace. he would have to get a hundred yards in the rest of this we're for right, each, each game. The rest <laughs> of the season. Um, so you guys we're were hundred right. yards for the last half. Man, I was really optimistic on everything. Smitty, he looks like he'll get there. So I think we'll be right on that one. Um, he's at six hundred yards. Oh no way, no way. We're at six for the year right now. We got uh, seven games left. I, so they, I mean, that also is David out too. You know, it's so. po- it's possible to get eight picks in seven games. We've got two games against the the red the the, the football team and two games against the Giants. So it, something would have to something. And one against the Saints. Calling it a pick fest. Um, I'm calling a pick fest. I'm calling it I'm now. Picking a pick fest. And and sweat on seven, but um, but he's at three and a half right now. So we'd have, he'd have to get three and a half in the next seven games. Possible, definitely. Yeah, but it's we're, about the half and halfway. But uh, he can he could definitely be just one under or something close to that. So um, for for this team though, right? I you you said five and two they could do it, Jackson. I just I see them more being likely to you know four and three or three and four. Um, you don't so, think you don't think that uh. But but um, do you think who do you think we're gonna lose to? I think we could beat the Saints. I think we could take three or four against uh the Giants and the football team. And then honestly, I'm I'm. I, we could lose one of those games. I, I, I'm trying to give myself a little bit of leeway, but I think I honestly think we could beat every team except for one of the Washington and New York games because I, I really, truly believe Dallas is going to win the division and that they're, they're most likely going to play uh, their backups for the last so game. So I, think I, I, I do believe that, but, you, but it's hard to say when you have scrappy teams like the Giants and the football team who just beat Tom Brady and the Bucs. Um, right. It's we got something division, to play for, baby. Though playoff spot. Chase Young is also I mean, out. So, I mean, technically, so do they. But um, he's okay. That's that's news to me. Um, I mean, those division games can go either way. And don't I mean, listen. I know it's a win week. You know, we we beat the Broncos and we're feeling great. That's how we're feeling right now. How do we feel after a loss? You just got to remember that. And isn't this the type of team that's always ready to disappoint when we when we're at this high <laughs> when we're feeling this high? So don't bring that up. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna go with <sighs> hindsight, dude. Like seven that. games. What's your what's your season prediction for the last seven games? All right, for me, so it's, I it's, it's four and I'll three. Do, I'll give yeah, it I think four and three, three is, is pretty pretty accurate. I want to say six and one, but I'm gonna err on the side of caution and say five and two. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna honestly, you know what? Yeah. Seven and oh, fuck it. <sighs> seven and oh. Yeah. No. I like no. it. I mean, I'm hoping you're let's, right. Let's be reasonable. I'm being reasonable. Be reasonable. Seven and oh, brother. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's tough. I, I mean, I, I obviously I think we're gonna beat the Jets. Uh, Giants, I could see us splitting with. Washington, I can also see us splitting with. So that leaves us with, at three and two, and then the Cowboys and Saints. I think I feel like that Cowboys an automatic dub. It, it yeah, I mean, what you're, what, if, if they play, if they play their backups, the I could see us beating them. The Broncos beat them when they were playing their starters, so it's possible listen, either way. Listen, Jackson, 7-0 is in the realm of possibility because I'm not looking at the schedule and seeing, like, automatic loss anywhere. So it's, like, possible. It is possible. It's not, it's not very probable. It's probably, like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Like 10%. It's probably, like, 10%. Jackson. I'm actually going to go 5-2. and two. Hurts MVP if we go 7-0? Hey, I... I'd be more than I'd be more than happy they go five and two. They hit my record prediction for the year. So I'm gonna go um, five and two. That would leave us with nine wins. And we I think four and three not, or five and two are probably the most realistic. We would not make the playoffs though, probably. You don't, think so? eight, you don't think so? I think if, we will. If we are NFC's, nine, if we the NFC is strong, dude. The NFC is bad. The NFC is bad. NFC is bad. If we go five and two, Dallas, and Dallas one, Cardinals, Rams, Bucks, all, all NFC. Yes, Packers. Those are all those are all the locked up positions. But we're fighting against the Panthers, Falcons. Um, I, who else? I like our division is kind of in the fight still. I mean, Cardinals and Rams are in the same division. Yeah, I mean they'll lock up like you know top two spots along with the pack, top three spots along with the Packers. But we're fighting against like Falcons, Panthers. I forget who has the sixth spot, but I think we're kind of in contention with them too. They're not great teams. If we go I mean, five and two, the, the way I mean, we're going against we're the done. Vikings, um, uh, Seahawks. I mean, it's going to be hard, but there's a chance we, there. We have the tiebreaker win against any team except for the 49ers, is what I've heard. So if we do go like five and two or uh, six and one or something like that, we will make the playoffs 100%. Hmm. I, I see it. I see it happening. Damn, I mean, if, dude, if we get in the playoffs this year, that would be unbelievable. <laughs> Is it awesome. looking like it, awesome. maybe. Be crazy. But either when way, you think I'm out. That's when I think I'm out. They pull me back in. I'm not. I'm not tanking. But <laughs> another um, another right, nine nine win season in the playoffs. Dude. That puts that that puts that draft pick all the way down to like the twenties, though. Oh yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. Let's let's go around the room real quick, and we're gonna end here with uh, a Saints prediction. We'll do scores and uh, just a quick. What do you think wins the game for me? Well, and who's like, who's who's starting for them? Because I know they're a quarterback Simeon. out. I think. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be Simeon, but um, it's, and um, and Alvin Kamara's out too, right? He, yeah, it, it, we're is. not we're not sure actually. He oh, might oh come he back. was out for he was out for last week. Yeah, he but, might come um, back. I mean, I mean that would be great. Um, one two, just run the ball and play to stop the ball. Don't just give them random free yards. They're the Saints defense um, is good. They are well, they are uh, they're kind of a middle of the pack. Um, are they? All right, let's see defense. I'm, I mean, we're the best like rushing offense right now and i think as far as rushing yards they've allowed the most in the league oh wow so that's your game right, plan right okay, stick there with the, stick with that the plan, is your then. game plan stick to the plan um i'm going to predict it's at new orleans um i i think we get this win i mean you got trevor simeon i think we get some picks again i like our our secondary to get picks um i'm gonna, gonna i'm gonna game. i'm gonna, I'm gonna say i'm gonna say 30 20 on this one 30-20. I was actually in the same First. ballpark. I think we're going to – I think it's going to be 31 – 31-17. go say we're going to handily 20. win this one. Play, what do you I say? think the Saints are in shambles right say, now. 27-21, uh, Birds. 27-21. Okay. 27-21. I'll go 35-24. I think we've been scoring a lot, so I think 35 – I think – I don't know. I think we're going to continue to score a, a fuck ton against this team. We have been scoring a lot Run. this year, dude. It's actually kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Run that um, ball. All right. So we'll end there. We're back. We're officially back. Squad's back. We're 21. Happy 21st. We can drink. Drink to another pod. We're done. Um, Cheers. I can thanks, drink to that. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. And let's, uh, let's let Flay do the honors for coming back to us. We missed you. So uh, as we do every you know single episode, we have 
landed. landed. There it is. We'll see you guys next time. See you guys. Later, everyone.